our crafty people out there. We have a new project. I um, did a little thrifting and I found a few things. I've been seeing these all over Pinterest, all over everywhere. It may be obviously the analytics, uh, catching on to the fact that I like them and I keep looking at them, but I, I do think it's kind of popular uh, even now. I am going to do some bell bottoms and the easiest way to do that uh, with thrifted stuff is first you grab your pair good old jeans now these are I believe they're considered they don't they're not really tight on me they fit really well well they're a little baggy but they're they fit well in the leg so I don't think that I would consider them quote skinny but I think they're they're at least a straight leg. They might be considered skinny. They do taper a bit here. And I've already kind of marked how long they are on me. So I will have to chop them off. I think what I'm going to do is just chop them off and let them fray. This is not um, a great cotton content. Actually, uh, I'm wrong. It's not too bad. It's 98% cotton and only 2% spandex. So these should fray out perfectly at the bottom when I just chop them off and, and let them go. This pair, I believe it's something called premium skinny. And I was looking at the other things I bought. I think these, this might be a Kato's brand, which is fine because I'm just cutting them up. Although it was suggested to me recently that maybe y'all would be interested in seeing me cut up some expensive stuff. Like those Peter Millars I cut up for those dresses. Oh, Lord. I had no idea what I was doing. Anyway, the price tag on these is $5.49, and I got them at American Thrift. Nothing fancy about them. Just plain little pockets. They had a little distressing already on the sides, which I liked. Um, but they're, like I said, nothing, nothing to write home about. Good old pair of jeans. And then for our bells, we're going to use this really pretty yellow fabric. Again, it happens to be a Kato's dress. I picked this one up at um, a Goodwill. And this little blue tag, that doesn't tell me anything, but the dresses are $6.99. And it's this gorgeous, bright, sunny yellow. And it's actually what I think I would consider... Um, an eyelet lace it um, I mean it's it's a the fabric part of it is larger obviously but I think this would still be considered an eyelet lace feel free to comment correct me I'm not sure uh, not an expert but we're gonna use this as our bell and I should have plenty and I also made sure when I bought it that it didn't have any kind of seam so the back I mean, the bottom half has a seam on each side, which is fine because we'll still have plenty of room to cut our bell out on, on each side. But it doesn't have a seam down the back like a lot of dresses do with zippers and stuff like that. <clears throat> this one just had buttons in the front, which, I mean, it's a really cute dress, but I don't, I don't, I don't need another dress. I need, <laughs> I don't need, but I want some bell bottoms. So I thought these would be really neat, sunny, kind of fun. And I probably won't wear them until, you know, the fall, but I think they'll still be cool. So I'm going to get started on this by cutting this up first to see what kind of fabric amount I have. And then, actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get going. I'm going to get my scissors. And we're just going to go ahead and cut that up. Now, on one side... It's open from the little slip part and on the other side it's attached and it's actually done with um, it looks kind of like a like a French seam actually the way they sewed it they ended up encasing the seam of the outer dress in the little lining here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from this line and just make it easy on myself go up around the skirt and come back down so I don't have to worry about this seam and then we will see what we've got 
for our bell fabric and we'll start cutting on our jeans. Actually, I won't make y'all watch this boring part, but y'all get the gist of it. I'm going to cut right up this seam and I don't care if I cut the lining, that doesn't matter to me, but we're just gonna cut right up this seam all the way to the waistline. And when we get to the waistline, we'll just encircle the waistline by cutting it at that, that seam. And sorry, it's a little thick right here because it's tied up in that French seam. All right. Now I've got it here. And again, I'm just going to cut around the waistline. That should give me the best piece of fabric and it'll also take care of all these little gathers and pleats that they've got in it. Again, giving me a good read on how much fabric we've got. I'll get back with you as soon as I'm finished cutting this and we'll get ready to cut the jeans up. Okay, I'm looking at these pants and again, I've already kind of gauged a hem that I would need or how much I would need to take off the ends to make them I want them to hit right at, right before the floor, right past my ankle, because if I want to wear a, um, a wedge with them or something with a little heel, I still want them to fall properly. Now, that comes up to about one and three eighths inch. But again, these are high cotton, so I know they're going to fray. And if I cut them off without putting a proper hem in them, then I got to take into account a little bit of loss on the fraying and I would rather err on the side of long you know as opposed to too short so I think all I'm going to take off is an inch that 3 8 should give me any needed length that maybe I've missed because I'm doing it by myself and it'll also give it some fraying room so you can get a, a little bit, maybe a quarter inch of fray out of it and it not harm your length. And of course you can always trim the fray. So yeah, no harm there. So I'm gonna cut these off uh, one inch off of the ends of them that, to get them to the length I want. And again, I'm not hemming them. I'm just zipping across those babies so they, um, they can fray. And then I also went ahead and I cut my skirt up off my dress and I uh, ironed it just to get a good feel for how much I've got and I, I have plenty. I mean even at the short end of this fabric where the waist was on the shorter piece uh, I've got a little over 17 inches almost 17 and a half inches and that should be more than enough especially since I'm not going to be using that for the bottom. I'm going to use this beautiful scalloped edge for the bottom and even on the short one, I've got 20 inches. So it's going to be a perfect width. I don't think I want my bell any bigger than 20 inches. <laughs> we'll see how creative I get uh, if I go for maximum. Uh, and this would, like I said, this will be plenty height-wise too. I don't think there's gonna be any issue. That sure as heck can't be uh, shorter than my knee to the floor. So, because that's, that's close to, it's right at 20 inches as well. So this pretty scalloped in is going to be the bottom that you see outside. Now, I tried to look. I don't really see a right and a wrong, but I'll look a little closer just to make sure. It's probably in the stitching, maybe around the centers here that will tell me right from wrong. And I think it, I think it has actually, because if, so this, that, that's is a good thing to save your seam right here. As it's folded in right here, that would mean this is the wrong side. And on this side, the stitching is just more, it's more of a little zigzag on this side than it is on this. This has a little more detail so I think that's how I'm going to tell right from wrong. It's going to be iffy. 
But if somebody's looking at my <clears throat> looking at my legs that close, they're looking for the stitching. So I think we'll be fine. Okay, I've marked it with a pen, which it makes it kind of hard to see. But this is about it's right below where my knee is, and I think this will be plenty of flare. I've measured this. This is about 17 inches altogether to the bottom from this point. Easier for y'all to see it. So 17 inches down, as you'll see, there's some there's the pin right there. So I'm gonna split both of these up the side, up to that 17 inch mark. So let's mark this one. This is the outside seam that's folded up right. I think I said inside earlier. Meeting the challenge, I swear. So 17 here. And let's just double check. Seventeen here. Yeah. Making sure. Don't want to have any accidents. That's the good thing about doing this with thrifted stuff, obviously. You can, uh, you can really do a lot of creative stuff without a whole lot of expense worry. And you're just making sure that those two are lined up. Well, it would help if they were on the right side together. But the point is, lined up my my end of my jeans to that point. Now, what we're going to do, again, get two pin cushions. I can't remember to do that. We're going to split up the side, and that's the side I've marked, this, the outside, just right up that seam. We're not doing anything fancy. We're just going to split right up that seam. And I'm going to try, well, this particular seam has been opened, so I'm going to try and hook my scissors underneath one of the sides. And I'm thinking, I think I'm going to put the bulky part of the seam to the back of the jeans. So this is the front, this is the back. Just just for aesthetics, I guess, when I sew it together, I don't want anything bulky in the front. I could clip that seam out all together, but I don't think it's necessary. So I'm just kind of, I'm going to try and be really careful and keep it as close to that seam as possible. That's the good thing about working with denim as well. It's a pretty easy fabric to work with. I mean, you usually need to get you a denim needle in your machine, but it, um, it's not hard to work with. All right, this is gonna be a big fail. Pretty excited, actually. I'm just cutting right up to that line that I made. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. And then I'm gonna compare them and obviously just make sure that um, I'm, I'm even. And this is the front, this is the back. So, again, I'm gonna cut and put the bulkier part of the seam to the back of the jean. So I'm just slipping my scissors into the front of that seam. I don't know that this would make a big difference. I may even, I'll probably end up clipping that seam anyway when I sew. Um, the next real question is, do I sew from the inside or the outside? And with this particular fabric being cotton and lightweight, I'm going to sew from the I'm going to sew from the inside to uh, conceal those seams. But if you wanted to uh, sew them like I did with some of the other pants, where this outside seam was open and it would fray, that's fine too. And I think. Um, I've seen some people put denim into denim. 
And when they do that, uh, sometimes, again, they want it to fray, so they'll, they'll put wrong sides together to make the seam on the outside. So, but again, it's, it's, it's all in what you want. And every project's, you know, unique because we're thrifting for this stuff, and it's not, uh, it's not set in stone. So I just want to check. Here's my cut. I just want to make sure my cuts are pretty even. It looks like I may have a little. Let me make sure. I'm trying to get these points together. Nope. I think we're good. So I've put the points together here, and we're right there. So we're good with the cut. Now we got to decide how wide do we want these beautiful yellow yellow bottoms to be. Now I'm going to fold the jeans kind of in the middle here. I'm going to push them up as far as I can before they fall off my table. And then we're going to spread them out. So let's see how far we can spread them and still capture that corner and that, that point. And this might be where my seam allowance comes in handy. I'll probably clip that because that's going to be double the fabric to go through. So just kind of wiggle it and try to get it into position. Now if I take it from here and I just go from corner to corner right here I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen inches. Okay. That's a pretty good bell. Thirteen inches. And then let's send let's send that ruler up. In the middle, if I'm just going to the point, I got fifteen inches here. So I want to add a half inch, obviously, for my seam allowance. You know, a, a, probably a quarter inch seam. So let's get an idea how we want to draw this out, or how we want to do this. We don't have to. We don't have to make a pattern per se, but it's always good to have a drawing. So, look at my crazy notes. So, essentially, we're going to do a triangle. And we're gonna, let's just draw us a triangle. Nothing fancy. Down the middle, we're measuring 15 inches, and we're going to add that half inch for the seam allowance. So, we need 15 and a half up and down here, all right? And then for a cross, we measured, measured it's about, it's about 13 inches. If I measure from this seam to this seam, which is, I wanna, I wanna get as much width out of it as possible. So we're gonna add, half inch there too. So for this bottom, we need 13.5 inches there too. Now the only other thing we've got to measure is this length. Might be easier to measure this one. And it is right at 16 and 3 quarters. 3 quarters. So, actually, it's about 16 and a half. Well, we'll go with 16 and three quarters. So, sixteen point seventy-five, and I don't know if we need seam allowance on that. 
if we're doing enough here. Hmm. Well, you know what? We'll go ahead and add it. We'll add a half inch just to make sure we've got enough and then we can trim it if need be. But what I'm gonna do is I'll pin it in first. And when I pin it in, that'll give me an idea if I'm right or wrong before I go to the sewing machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these, this triangle in these dimensions out of the yellow fabric. And then we're going to start, well, I'm gonna pin it and if it works, we're gonna sew it. So rough sketch for this particular pair of jeans, I measured the width between the two seams where I really wanna have that bell going out, the height between the point and the end of the hemline, and then the sides that I'm gonna need. So this would be the approximate triangle I need to create. I'm gonna go do that and we'll get back when we're pinning. I'm gonna take a quick moment to show y'all what I'm doing with this fabric to cut it in a triangle. <clears throat> I've put them wrong sides together, the two pieces, and then I've folded them in half. So, well, in half according to the shortest piece. And I've tried to line up my scallops so, you know, a little, makes it a little easier. So now that I've folded it in half, I'm going to place my scallops, the edge of my scallops, on a line here where I can just see the, the measuring line below those scallops, or in between those scallops, I should say. And that kind of gives me, you know, an even edge, because this one's not really even. Of course, I could cut it. And then I'm also lining up my fold on one of these other uh, grid lines. So I know that I need 15 and a half inches height, right? So make our life easier. I'm gonna go from this grid line that goes right underneath these scallops up to 15 and a half inches which is about right here, okay? So, I'll take my good old quilting ruler, the one with the edge. I need to give y'all what that one is. And I'm gonna put it right there at that 15 and a half. I'm gonna check it again, just to make sure. Yep, that's 15 and a half right there. And I'm going to cut across the top. I always want to measure twice before you do the cutting because you know you can't, can't go back. Padding's a lot harder. So I'm going to take the old rotary. And I'm cutting off the top. Oop. Need a new rotary blade. Have to get that out. So now I have the, and you can see it from here. 15 and a half inches of fabric. That's our height. Now we know, let's get our scallops lined up again. I like that option. You know that we need from that point here to the end of our scallops, we need here, I should say, on the bottom was 13 and a half divided by two. Oh, don't make me do math. Was that six? Six and three quarters or? Oh, good Lord. Six, 15. Yeah. Six and three quarter. Whew. Didn't miss some math in my head. If I'm wrong, y'all can nail me to the wall in the comments. But I think I should be okay. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from that corner over here, and I'm going to cut six and three quarters in. So about here. 
So I'm going to mark that with a little marker. And then I'm going to cut that. And if it's a little fudged in as far as an inch, or I mean, I, I'm not an inch, but a quarter of an inch, it's not going to hurt us. So I'm going to cut that. And then we're going to see if it fits in our jeans. And All right, what I'm doing right now is I'm getting ready to pin the um, bells into the jeans. And I was going to slim up that seam line, but honestly, it just pulled right off. And when I finished pulling it off, I just clipped it right here because you want to continue it up there. You don't want it to fray from there. This one didn't want to just pop off like that. So we're going to get the good old handy dandy seam rippers and see if we can rip it up. I want to see if I can get that satisfying rip out of it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Just want to send that seam ripper up. Come on. Catch. There we go. That is so satisfying. I have no idea why. Probably because I'm usually plucking seams. Alright, when I get up here to the top where the point is, I'm just going to clip it at an angle. And that just keeps it up there. So it's not going to fray any further because we're going to actually use that to... Uh, hold our bell in, we're going to seam it into that that point. Now I do see where it would be beneficial to make a paper template or something like that if you wanted to to be careful, obviously more careful than I am usually, with the uh, sizing of your bell. I, I was okay with it. I, I knew I had some room to wiggle and all I'm going to do is I'm going to, once again, try and check and make sure I've got, I think I've decided which side is my right side, so I think it's this prettier stitch here. So I'm putting, um, I'm putting the right side out to where it's going to show on the inside of my jeans, and I'm going to seam, I'm going to put this little point right up here in the point where I, I clipped it, up to the point where I clipped it. And I'm just going to run it down, and I think it's going to fit just fine if I'm just pulling it straight. It's going to fit just fine on this side, and it should fit, obviously, hopefully, just fine on that side as well. But I don't really think I need to pin it. I just wanted to make sure I had enough length in it. And I'm going to start at the... Um, at the point when I'm sewing it and we'll see if I can get it straight and this is this is cotton and kind of stretchy at least in one direction so it'll give me a little leeway just in case I want to try and get just a quarter inch up here so I can make sure that there's plenty of room at the bottom and I ended the scallops on these little points so um, They'll be my seam allowance, but they'll, they'll also be, if I need to trim for any reason, they're there. So let's go to the sewing machine and see if we can get one of these bells in. Or maybe I'll get one in and <laughs> give it a try, and then I'll show you how I did it. That's probably the better idea. I'm trying to get y'all a better view of this. I've got this pant leg splayed out as far as I can, making sure that I don't have more than my needed fabric underneath the machine. I'm starting my presser foot way up here at the very point of this fabric where it's, it starts where we cut it and it's on this back seam. I've got the seam folded as it naturally would have been before I cut it. And going to try and find my my foot pedal. And I'm going to start up here. Oh, I 
forgot to change the chest stitch. <laughs> okay. Back to our normal stitch. I was experimenting with some top stitch ideas, but honestly, I couldn't get the I couldn't get it back through all the way to the point. All right. Now I'm taking my first pin out. You can hear my pin cushion. There we go. And I am just going down again. Trying to keep a quarter inch. I can feel the back of the, you know, the, the jean right there underneath my finger. That helps me make sure that I'm catching both pieces of fabric. catching that back piece. The first seam is the easiest one because obviously you're not having to get into the leg or well you don't have to get into the leg but you're dealing with a little more fabric on the next seam. And I know I know there's someone out there thinking I'm going to put my finger in here, but I've done pretty well over these many, many, many years. I've been sewing since I was about, I think I was probably between 9 and 10 when I started on my back stitch. My grandmother started me on bean bags. <laughs> Once I ran out of beans, I made rice bags. Once I ran out of rice, she made me take them apart and do it again. So, anyway, that gives us a nice clean fold there. And um, honestly, we probably could have put that on the front. I just didn't know how this was going to turn out as far as how this process was going to happen. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this. And we're going to pull this point up. This is where we cut it. And I'm going to line this up as best I can with the point of the fabric and where we ended our other stitching. And we're going to sew like this, again, right sides to right sides, and make a seam down this side. So always start at the point. It makes, it all, makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to put my needle right in the area. <laughs> I'm trying to put it right over the last stitching line so I catch it and I have a clean corner there. And I'm going to do a little back stitching. Which of course, back stitching, you mess it up. Now what I'm doing this time with right sides to right sides, I'm using the edge of the fabric, the raw edges of the fabric as um, I'm putting them underneath the edge of my presser foot. That gives me about a quarter inch um, seam allowance, like we talked about. You just gotta keep making sure you're not catching anything extra. Because you don't wanna be seam ripping if you don't have to. This would be one of those pluck and pull kind of seam rippings. I don't think it would rip very easily. And we're ending with this little tab thing, which actually works out perfect because we can just clip it off. I'm gonna pull this out. And let's pull this leg out real quick. Let's see if I caught all of the corner. It looks like I did. Got a little fuzz there. This is all caught, and the only thing that is dipping out over the edge right there is those little points. And we'll go over to the table, check these out, clean them up, and I'll probably do an after video of what they look like on. Okay? 
Okay, we got our bells in, and this is what it looks like. I am excited. All I'm going to do for these little teeny tiny parts right down here is I'm going to trim them in the direction of the pants. And it really just kind of goes along with the curve of the um, scallop. So that was a perfect ending for those particular little pieces. Just clip them off and clip this one off. And now we don't have that little hangover. They lined up perfectly and I think they add a really cute flair to these pants. Now I know I've worked with lace pants and a couple of different pair and this pair and they're just I think they need more work honestly either some kind of bleaching embellishment so I'm gonna work on these a little more but I wanted you to see how cute the bells came out and um, I have plenty of the fabric left over that I may be able to do something funky, uh, just kind of tie it in or put some more buttons on stuff. The tricky part about doing it at this point is that if I do anything to these pockets, I'm either hand sewing or I'm gonna take the pocket off. And this satin stitching is a booger to take off. I mean, I could just take the pocket off completely. I've done that on some shorts, but I like my pockets. I use my pockets because all I carry is a cell phone with me. I don't carry a bag of any kind. So I need my pockets. And um, so that's, that's the crux of that. But I will see if I can figure out some kind of embellishment and I'll do some more posting on it later and even some more embellishing on the two uh, lace pants. But as far as the bells go, I think they turned out really super cute. And I will try them on and do a little short for y'all. All right. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I appreciate all of your support. And I love it when y'all let me know if you've got better ideas or new ideas or, or anything constructive. I'm trying to get louder. <laughs> anyway, y'all have a great one. And I'll see you on the next project.